is Talitha Kume, and you're tuned in to Intimate Conversations, presented by Food for the Soul, Hot, Hot 7025F, Make Radio Great Again. Hey, y'all. Hey, what y'all doing? Tune in to Intimate Conversations, presented by Food for the Soul Media Group, on Hot 702.5 FM Radio, every Friday, 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. What's up with the news we don't hear about? We're talking about it. If you're wondering if the whole world is tripping or it's just you, we're talking about it. Who's that? Who said that? Can we say that? Should we say that? We just did. Download the app at MixLR on the Google Play Store or Apple Store or tune in live every week on www.hot7025fm.com, Facebook Live or YouTube. Intimate Conversations with me, Talitha Kume, every Friday, 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Brought to you by Food for the Soul Media or Lane Worldwide. I am Talitha Kume and Bobby B. Welcome to Intimate Conversations with your girl, Talitha Kume, presented by Food for the Soul Media Group on Hot 702.5 FM and live on our FB page, you guys. And so you're tuned in to Talitha and Bobby, and we are live. You guys, um, if you guys haven't already, like our page, follow us on Instagram, and subscribe to our YouTube stations, Food for the Show Media Group, and Intimate Conversations. And if you would like to be a sponsor this year, hit us up at www.foodforthesoulmediagroup.press or email us at foodforthesoulpresents at gmail.com. Yeah, yeah. And if you'd like to be a guest on our show, and if you'd like to be a part of our conversation today, call us at... Uh at 702-551-5261. Yeah. Or you can comment on our Facebook page. And don't forget our hashtags too, man. Please. Don't hashtag forget food hashtag. for the soul and hashtag intimate, converse, intimate conversations. <clears throat> yeah, because we really need you guys to talk back share, to share, us. Share, 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 man. We really, really need you guys to talk back to us. So, you guys, for, the, <clears throat> for our theme for January, we were talking about or we were coming from the place of you thought. And we got that. And if you guys are wondering where we got that from, we got that <laughs> from, uh, we used to watch, uh, what was it? The, the Rap Game. The Rap Game. The rap yeah. game. So we used to watch this show called The Rap Game uh, that was produced by Jermaine Dupree. And um, there was a, one of the rappers on there, what was her name, B. Trinata? Was it D. Trinata? So D. Trinata, um, she was one of our favorites. I think it was the very last season, if I'm not mistaken. And um, they had a song that she, she had a song that she did with uh, the other winners of the past seasons, and it was called You Thought. But it was really funny because of um, her accent and the way she, dis- how, how she said right. You Thought. And so that's the reason why we um, we laugh, we giggle a little bit when we say You Thought. It's always hilarious. But basically it's You Thought This, and it really wasn't that. Correct. And so that's kind of where we're coming from for the month of July. And on our show today, we're going to kind of free flow, you guys. We're going to try this out. Because um, you guys don't know, but last week, man, we had a rough time. It was a rough to week, it. all week, period. Yeah, we we just had we had a whole lot going on, and then we were just kind of trying to figure out my my mini notes, and we were talking about the election and different things like that or whatever, and uh, not sure if Facebook was excited about that or not, but nope. Um, so that's that. So this week we're gonna go a little bit light. Well, we're actually we're not going. A little bit lighter. We're going in a totally different direction, but we are talking about your misquoting scripture. Oh, I'm uh, super spiritual self, right? And I I came up with that just because. I'm sorry, you guys. In these times right now, uh, a lot of us are looking for something higher. We're looking for a higher being, or we're looking for um, a purpose or a, a, some type of meaning to life, you know, and, and I, I feel like a lot of people are either running away from religion or they're going towards a religion. So it's right. kind of, it's kind of both, but a lot of people are, are kind of, um, especially like for, for us, we have been brought up in a religion or in a system where we're finding out, or we found out in 2020 that some of the stuff that we learned just, May not have been what that was, so we thought. We thought. We thought that some of the things meant this, and they really didn't mean that. Right. And so we've been going around quoting scriptures and doing all this other kind of stuff or whatever, and that really um, sometimes those meanings of some of the scriptures that we've even been taught are not the correct meaning at right. all. And we're right. walking around being super lofty and spiritual, thinking that we're on point saying these things, and it's not even 
what it meant. And then, and a lot of y'all don't know that Bobby is like really, really um, a scholar, man. He's a really. I'm not um, a scholar. He, well, I'm he's just, a. I just read and well, pay attention. Well, uh, well, I call that a scholar because a lot of people don't have your insightfulness. They don't, they don't, they're not able to pick things apart. And so I love talking to him. Like I said, that's the reason why he's on the show because his perspective is so different and it just makes you go, hmm. And that's the whole reason why I'm doing this show. The reason why I'm doing the show is because I want to start trying to talk about some of the difficult topics that we don't talk about, period. Mm -hmm. And then once we talk about those, I want you guys to talk back to me. And then I just want to find out, you know, other people's opinions. And that's why I said I like Bobby's opinion because he's going to come from a totally different perspective that some of us might not ever think about, but it's so on point. You know what I'm saying? It's it's so right where you need it to be. And, and that's because he does pay attention. And a lot of us, I feel like sometimes you guys, we, we just don't pay attention or either we just allow what's being fed to us as right. what it is. Right. And we don't look deeper. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I think now times are calling for us to look deeper look into stuff like i said in one of my other shows ask questions you guys i used to be that person i used to ask questions and really delve into stuff and not be so surfacey but i know that there's so much going on some of us are like golly we we can't be deep about everything because if we do right. you know what i'm saying you'll be depressed all the time i want to kill yourself right absolutely you know what i'm saying because there's so much going on and there's so much knowledge and there's so much um wrong stuff out there that we're like okay golly you know Sometimes we just want to breathe or we just want to, um, you know, run through the through the green grass or, or, or <laughs> whatever right. just to make you, you know what I'm saying, just to make you feel a little bit better. So we're going to try and flip our show where we're just going to have more dialogue sessions, but we don't want it to be such as we don't want to be t we, we don't want it to be to the point to where um, it's always bogged down with heavy stuff, because I know right. that. Um, now it's just the heaviness is all around us. So I want to try and do some stuff that just kind of keeps it a little bit light. But sometimes it's just hard. This is, yeah. Don't you think? Absolutely. It's not really one of them times to be super light. Uh, be direct. Yeah, and I and I try to be I, I I try to be direct too, and and that's one thing that I feel like I'm I'm okay with that. A lot of people say that I'm sometimes I'm too direct, but um, I'm just saying as far as the just the subject matter period there's right. so much going on and we really want to help and kind of just um uh, start conversations you know what i'm saying yeah. but we just don't want it to be all just uh drab, drab 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 yeah politics or even you know even uh christianity or spirituality we know that that's heavy and that's out there right now but we still want to kind of just maybe talk about some things that are a little bit more lighthearted and kind of hit you in a in a um in a nice safe space versus right. you know versus just being like you should and they said and we said and we think and we thought that you know what i'm saying so it's just yeah. a lot so anyway that was my disclaimer before we get started you guys but uh what we're doing is we are really just talking about a few misused bible verses that we're gonna have some fun with because we're <clears> gonna <throat> see we're gonna name the bible verse and then we're gonna talk about um what we thought it meant and then see if we're right. And now this article that I found, I found this on, I think it was Christian Network or something like that. I'm not exactly sure. So we don't even know if the person who wrote this is actually correct. But that's why I have Bobby because I really want Bobby to be able to kind of shed some light because he's able to break a lot of that stuff down. So we are going to go ahead and get started. So my first scripture is Jeremiah 29, 11. And I know, I know a lot of you guys have heard this before. And it says, for I know the thoughts or the plans that I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. That's the King James Version. And then it says, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. And that's the um, the uh, new, was that New American or New International Version, or, or, or uh, so that's the NIV. And so it, it, the, 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 the scripture uh, in the context, the writer says, we often encourage others about their hope and future when their situation seems bleak or filled with health challenges. 
They pray that they pray this verse, and when the answer doesn't turn out as they expect it, they question God and the church, and maybe they even turn away from God because Jeremiah they, 11. Jeremiah twenty nine eleven. That's what it says. Jeremiah twenty nine eleven. And so, what what did you when you first heard this verse, or you ever said this verse? What did you think that the verse meant? Exactly what they wanted me to think it meant until I read the rest. Okay, so what's the rest? I'm reading it now because I don't have those in my notes here. I okay. actually do not have Jeremiah written here one time. Okay. So I'm missing a whole page. Okay. But um, and that's not that's not a flub. It's actually uh -huh. um. So Jeremiah twenty nine eleven, you said you're trying to look for it. I want to read the context. Okay. About the disaster and about the harm, right? 2911. 29. Therefore, the Lord says, I will bring on them disaster and they cannot escape it, though they cry out. Where is that? Jeremiah 11. Jeremiah 29, 11. 29, 11. So before I know the thoughts that I think towards you, that's not in there? Oh, yeah. That's what the, that's you what know, the text was that I, that's what I read. So what are, what are you coming back with? No, yeah. I thought exactly that. I always thought whenever I read that growing up, like in, you know, in church, or when they would read that to us, that it was about money. Mm -hmm. I thought money, well, I had a pastor uh, first church I went to like 2005 and that's all they preached was money 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 and this is one of their biggest scriptures and reading it all now I know pro you know being prosperous is way more than that it's way more than health it's way more than being able to put your hands on things it's seeing what God really can do in your life and so you always thought that this meant um having a good job or knowing your purpose or whatever always I always thought it was just money I, I didn't even I didn't even look into having, when I first heard the scripture, read the scripture, or learned about it in school or in church, it wasn't about anything other than money. It was just used for that. Okay. Well, the, the chapter shows that it is directed towards the Israelites. So he was actually talking to the Israelites. He wasn't talking to an individual. Right. And he said that the Israelites had disobeyed God's commandments, which resulted in their exile to Babylon. And the good news is that God has not forgotten about them. So really, the scripture is talking about the Israelites and how he's like, hey, I know the plans I have for you. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, their peace is for peace and it's not evil and it's to prosper you. And so ho no harm is going to come to you. So it's pretty much, I mean, if you want to correlate it and make it towards an individual, you know what I'm saying? Like, like a lot of church verses do, you can right. do that. But that's kind of what it's talking about. And so that that scripture is saying that we just kind of gotten that wrong a lot because that's right. not that's not what he meant. Right. And so the Super next one is right. yours. So now I need to find out if you even have that. Talk because to if me. you're missing a page then Which one is it? It's uh number three. Psalms forty six ten. Yeah, I think you you missed, and see, you when I printed this, I printed yeah. all these, and all the ones that sit on the couch are my old notes. So no, I don't have it. No, you must have left one of I'll the pages. On, you must have left one of the pages on there. <clears throat> you had to have. Okay. Psalms forty six ten. Be still, and know that I am God. Talitha. Be still, and know that I am God. Mm -hmm. From. The, when I heard that said in church a lot, I just thought that we needed to depend on God. So he's saying, be still, like, don't make a move. Know that I got you. That's what I get from the scripture. Well, what, he, is that, what does that mean? Uh, for me, it just meant, like I said, it's like not a lot of times we try to run our own lives or we try to... Um, figure out the next move or whatever, because I am I am that person for sure. Right. And so if I heard that be still and know that I am God, in my mind I would think, okay, Talitha, chill, mm -hmm. and, and know 
that God is the author of everything. So if he's the author of everything and I know that that's who he is, then I don't need to be all up in the air about how's this going to work, what's going to happen. What, and that's what, such, that's and such that's, a perfect perfect view and okay. wishful, it's, but people don't do that. That's not how the church is designed. But I'm saying, but that so, is that is that kind of that's what, what it should be. Think? It should okay. be like, okay, God, I'm uh, I'm bringing this to you, and I don't put my mouth on it, right. my thoughts on it, none of that on it. Right. You know. But what we do is, we tell God, hey, I'm gonna bring this to you, and then all the while trying to still be God while, you know, bringing something to Him. Right. Doing all the things that we were trying to, we're trying to see Him do. Mm-hmm. And you know, it's not you know, unless He's guiding you to do it. That ain't God. But that and that's always been hard for me, and you know that we've had many discussions about right. that because I, I know that God is is not really a God of works. Of course, He has a design that He has for you to do. But I often wonder, like for instance, I always use the uh, example of finding a job. And so if what is, God, what God, is God knows, of works? God knows, God knows, I need a de- God. God knows I need a job. Right. And so I go in, I put in applications and everything um, because I need a job and I'm going on interviews and different things like this or whatever. And I know that God is God, but I feel like there are some things that I should know. And like sometimes it's like difficult to know, like, God, should I take that job? Mm -hmm. Should I take this pay cut? God, should I leave this job? Should I take this career? And so it's kind of like I feel like I make the decisions myself, and I don't possibly allow him to make the decisions. I don't. I right, don't know. I think somebody said something. That is. She, uh-huh. What's she saying on that? Wait, is this a question? I don't know. Could also me be quiet and believe? Oh. Okay, for the um, it it could also mean be yeah. quiet and believe. Yeah. Okay, I get also, it. Also, yeah. Yeah, the uh, be st- yeah, yeah, be, be still, still and totally, know that totally. I am God. So, but see, you're right. It would be believe. You have to actually do that. You have to actually believe God. So is that the only thing you need to do? So yeah, I'm saying, do like, you do you sit when he says be still? Are you still? Or are you still and saying, okay, God, I know you got me. I'm going to go ahead and fill out this application. I feel like you, you might be I'm overthinking saying? it. But that's, because that's I, the what operation I feel like. is, the operation is, okay, God, I know what I desire. Yes. You know, and I know what I want for this. When you finally get there, because a lot of people don't get to that point mm-hmm. because of misteaching. Uh-huh. You know, they don't get to the point where they can actually say, I desire this and then achieve it. You get there, you pray about it, and then you just do your continual work God's going to make it work because he's going to he's going to walk you through walk you through where you need to go to get that particular training for whatever you said that you wanted to have okay you know so that might be you getting kicked down the stairs that might be whatever it's just know that whenever you're moving you're moving with God okay you see what I'm saying as long as I gave it to him yeah because I'm saying some of this stuff is really, I know the Bible a lot of times is like literal or, or people take it very literal. And so they're like, okay, am I supposed to move? Am I supposed to? And that's how I am sometimes. I'm like, literally, God, what are you saying to me? Right. You know what I'm saying? And and that's kind of what I know that I need to work on. And I know a lot of people, I know I speak for a lot of people when they're like, okay, literally, God, I'm sitting here and and I need you to to speak to me and so people like yourself and maybe some other people really hear a voice right. and they hear and they're, they're, they're super in tune. So they say, I heard God tell me to walk this way. Right. You know what I'm saying? And some of us don't, we don't get that. I think that's why we're a little bit lost because <laughs> right. we and don't, because we don't, we don't get that, that still little voice in our ear that says, um, Talitha, make this move right now, you know, and so um, that's going to be my prayer for 2021. Lord, give me direct conversation, please, so I can hear it audibly, right on, right, right in my ear. But that actual um, in the in the text it says, or in the um, the article it says that it means that it applied to the Israelites again, right. and it said that God was in the midst of His city, and that there are wars and natural disasters going on all around them. But He's just telling them, "Don't be afraid. Watch Him work." 
as he overthrows their enemy. So basically, he was just like, look, huh, yeah. <laughs> I, I thought y'all knew, you, you know, yeah. I thought y'all knew who I was. And, and apparently, y'all don't. Um, yeah. And so this next one is Matthew uh, 4, I'm sorry, Matthew 7, 1. And this one says, judge not that ye be not judged. And so people, especially uh, uh, church folk huh. and, um, you know, non-believers, they, they throw that out there a lot. Yeah, they and so that one out. What, what do you think about that? What do you think that that meant when people were saying, judge not that ye be not judged? That's what the. That's got to be the King James Version. Yeah. But judge not. So don't you, don't you, roll over a stone mm -hmm. that you don't want rolled over on you, and that that we've heard that we've you know it's in a whole lot of different proverbs and this and that, mm -hmm. but to take that and make it way deeper or way more precise, I don't know the white situation, I don't know the white problem, the white struggles, a white lady, so I'm not going to talk about those things. Okay. But I know the struggles of black man, and I know the issues as a black man, so I could talk about judge those things. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So. Stay in your lane and speak about what you have business speaking about is what I believe this means. You think so? Yeah, absolutely. Um, like nature. Okay. You know, if a, you know, you're know, you sitting in your front, your front line enjoying the scenery and an apple falls out the tree and hits the concrete, several things are going to happen. The tree's going to be missing the fruit. It's going to bust on the ground, <laughs> and you're going to hear it, all of those. You know what I'm saying? It's the law. The tree that they fell, it's missing now, missing fruit. Mm -hmm. It hit the ground, it busted. Okay. And I heard it all. Right. You know, it's the law. It doesn't, that, that apple doesn't fall off the tree and then shoot up into the sky. Mm -hmm. You know, so God doesn't, he's not as complex as we've made him out, made to, him be. out to be off mm -hmm. of our foolishness. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. He's all created and he knows everything. He made us all, but the way things operate aren't really that difficult. Okay. You know. <clears throat> and 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 well, I I, I blame you know, uh, I blame a lot of misinterpretation like we're doing now of of text and what people have said and what people have taught that's just kind of been from what they thought, right? Mm -hmm. And so um, the wrong in the context in here that says it's wrong is that Christians and non-believers use this in an attempt to prevent others from judging themselves or each other. So that's the that's how they've used this. Right, it's totally wrong. Um, and it says there is little tolerance for others making judgmental comments. But what it says that the right text is that Jesus was basically saying that we're not to judge others until we have repented and dealt with our own sin, which is pretty much what you just said. Um, and we are to judge ourselves, ensuring that we are not committing the same or worse. Right. And so that's really what the scripture is saying. It's not saying, hey, look, don't. Don't judge me because you got your own sin. I mean, it, it, it's, 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 it's kind of people, that. Stay in your lane. Mm -hmm. Don't judge yeah. that man for walking on his hands. Yeah. If you don't have no damn feet. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. yeah, you let somebody else who doesn't have feet judge him for walking on his hands. Right. If you use a chair, buddy. Why would you do that? You know, it's not your lane. Right. Right. But a, a lot of people kind of try and, and use it to, to, to just... Not try to happy, justify yeah, their to mess, justify, yeah. right? And they do that through uh, trying to justify their mess by finding people who are like minded or in the same. Yeah, you know, it's yeah, I can get that. And then I think the church over overuses it or overdoes it sometimes because they're so judgmental. But can we fault the church? Because okay. the church is designed the the Western church was designed to run people away from God. You think? No. Yes, absolutely. You, we thought so. The church was not the church was not designed to the Western to church. Break. The Western church was straight designed to keep you away from God because I ain't seen nothing more divided in my life. So it wasn't it wasn't to bring people. Jesus closer will come to back here and he would be walking around like, "Where's where's my arm at? Oh my God, where's my leg at?" Right. You know, if it's supposed to be the body, why is it so separate? Right. What right. happened? You're right. <clears throat> You're right, and we can't survive separate, and that's why you know that's is exactly why we're. <laughs> We are falling apart. Yes. Absolutely. So that's crazy, you guys. So we, we thought. I thought that's a good, um, that's a good point or a good a good view that I I didn't I've never seen that. I know that now, you know, because we're in the the COVID times that 
we haven't even gone to church um, in a long time, but I never knew or thought that they were running us away from from God. But with a lot of stuff that we're finding out, it seems like they might absolutely be doing that. Yeah, you be cool with your neighbor yeah. until you find out your neighbor goes to a church you don't like, yeah. then you ain't cool with your neighbor. Yeah. Separation, division, Division. straight designed by Satan. Yeah. Straight up. Well, you guys, when we come back, uh, we are going to try this again, the actual factuals with Bobby and more um, about y'all messing up uh, these doggone scriptures or about us messing up these doggone scriptures. You're listening to Intimate Conversations with Talitha and Bobby on Hot 702.5, and we will be right back. Yeah, it's okay. I'm so far from where I come from. I do not ever forget. Feel like I'm married to this. I just tell them it's a check like I'm checking the list. Promise I can't never change. I am so stuck in my way. Get what you get. I'm just learning from the trench. Opposition catch a fade. They better not flinch. I'm the one that put the time in. I'm the one that put the grind in. I don't waste none. I don't play none. Keep it real. Never lie. They know I stick to the script. I know I be in it, come with some chip I cannot fumble a slip Know what's a catch, I just work on my grip That's just a tip They wanna know where I come from I just tell them I come out the mud They wanna know where I come for I just tell them I'm tryna come up Tell them I need me a bag Need me a bag, it's finna go up Tell them I need me a bag Need me a bag, I'm feeling one up Bad. Do some number for the rat, rat. Do some number for the rat, rat. Do some number for the rat, rat. Back to Intimate Conversations with Talitha and Bobby, presented by Food for the Soul here on Hot 702.5 FM. And we are talking about things we thought. But before we continue, we want to see what the actual factuals are from Bobby. Yep. Let's go. Actually, the actual factuals are, nah, but we're talking about how the church is just not really designed for man and not for God's people, not in America. Nope. The real issue is too many dogs are forcing themselves to live by rules specifically written for cats. Rahab was not Ruth, nor was her God-ordained direction the same. Samson didn't eat anything made of grapes, but Paul wanted Timothy to drink wine. John ate locusts and honey, and the two ladies in the Book of Kings ate their own sons. Mary conceived Jesus at 12, and Sarah was 90 when Isaac was born. You might be a whole Israelite living as a Midianite worshiping the God of an Amorite. During this season, you need to actually seek God's face, listen, and be saved. That's the actual factuals. Wow. Golly. Everything was designed for everybody. Not everything was designed for everybody. How thought-provoking was that? So basically, it's just... My my life is not your life, right. period. And we have been taught by society and uh, by the church and by religion 
Um, and even in the word, thinking that we all are on this same path and we are absolutely not. Right. So what I do has no effect on you. And just like that other scripture, I can't judge you for doing what you're doing because you're in a whole nother lane. But God told you to run that race. Right. But as long as what I do doesn't affect you right. and cause you to feel or to be in some other place that you shouldn't be, yeah. that doesn't cause you to walk along with God. <clears throat> Okay. You know, then we don't do. But outside of that, man, it's cool. You decide to do that, that's fine. I do this. So totally, man. So that you means know. that I, I I drink wine and you drink uh hard liquor and that's cool. It's whatever. We ain't it tripping. Is. Huh? Right. You okay. use different kind of shampoos on the hair on your head than you do the hair down there. Yeah. You know, it's different. Different yeah. parts of the body require different treatment. This Bible was written for a whole lot of different parts of the body. So I'm gonna speak to my prophets. This knowledge is for you. I'm going to speak to my, this knowledge is for you. So yeah. it's not all. To my servants. Know. Now, the guy who stands at the pulpit and gives the knowledge to everybody, his job is to let everybody get that knowledge. I'm giving you a general knowledge. You receive what God is telling you, and then you be the best you can be for God and his kingdom with that. Okay. And there's not too many men of God that stand in the pulpit with that knowledge. Because Arthur I, Dixon's I, one of them. Well, I think that he they it. it's hard because they don't know. They don't they don't understand well, because they're not if paying it, attention to right, God. They if, think that they're supposed to make some sort of corporate like hey, like what what is what's the use of having a room with a whole bunch of the same computer in it? But if it you, looks silly if you're not using these computers to do different things, you know, you're just making clones, you're not making disciples. That's what that's what the difference that's what the difference is. America wants to make clones. They want yeah. everybody to operate the same way. All right. blacks to be the exact same way whenever you're in public. We want you to be controlled the same. Right. You know. Yeah. As opposed to, well, you think, you know, you you dress weird, man. You eat wild locusts and honey. You must be John the Baptist, so you must be a baptizer. Oh, you wear this, so you uh, do that, and you carry around this little satchel with all these little medicines in it. You must be the doctor. Mm -hmm. They don't allow you nowadays to be a different person in the body. It's like you got to bring, you got to be different at work. Then you show up to church, you got to be the same. Well, put on the suit and, oh, and lie to everybody. But it's, do, <laughs> it's terrible. But do you think, though, I, I think, though, in, in their defense, though, they, if, if some of them, if they've gone to school, mm -hmm. you know, then school absolutely, and we talking about that, school absolutely is teaching them to all be the same, and this scripture means the same thing, mm -hmm. um, and you teach it this way. So a lot of people that are in the pulpit, you know, it's possible that they don't understand that because when they went to school, they weren't taught that. And so it's, and like you said, you can hear from God, but if you don't know what you're supposed to be hearing or if you don't know what to ask like what you said then it's hard for them to know so you're like okay well they're not listening to god but what if it's that i'm listening to god but i don't know what what i'm supposed to be hearing right. just like how they tell us to pray if you pray specifically then god is going to answer your specific prayer versus praying generally and just saying hey god touch the world bless the world you can right. do that but you also want to say god bless my home uh, bless, bless my husband, bless my marriage, bless, ble bless my children. All of these things are specific. And then when you ask God, you say, hey, God, what should I do about my daughter? Right. We're going through some stuff or whatever. So specifically you tell him and then you expect an answer to that specific question. So I think that some of these pastors out here, they either were taught wrong, like we're, like we're learning, or um, they don't know the questions to ask to say, okay, God, if I'm doing this sermon, Right. You know, and some of them do it. Speak through me, and then whoever needs to hear this yeah, will pull. Yeah, you hear the ones we'll you pull, hear the people that do you know, that. We'll pull different them. stuff. You know, yeah, I totally, get it. Totally. And so, you guys, as we finish the we thought the misquoted scriptures, let's get into the last scriptures um, that get misquoted a lot. So, I have Romans eight twenty eight, and it says, "All things work together for good." Bobby. <laughs> Oh my God! That's All things work black. together for good, <laughs> and it's true. It works together for good, but the uh, the the whole page is gone. Is this it? No. But anyway, we don't need it. Uh, it was, I, man. I remember when I first heard that. It was in the same situation with that that lady who, you know, said that, "Hey, man, you shacking? You need to marry this woman." Okay. They forced me to marry that woman. Okay. I was young to the faith. I knew not, you know, from then. Mm -hmm. See, God used that situation to wake me up. Hey, wow. boy, you finna start reading and learning this because you can't go through this again. Yeah. You know. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, man, all things work together for good for for those who love the Lord as a continue, to continue, 
scripture, right? Right. right. Uh, they leave that out. They don't want you to know that the, all the scriptures before that show what you need to be doing, mm-hmm. how you need to be living, and then that comes up. But people don't want to hear that. Just like in Matthew, they don't uh, they don't want to cut their eye out when it causes them to sin. You want to be that literal, you know. Let's not mix this up. And so, but I'm saying what, so when she told you that all things work together for the good. No, no, no. She didn't say that in reference to my life. It was just one of her favorite things to like say before Uh she started hooping out uh, tongues and stuff. She had like a few scriptures that was powerful points that she would always go to to make sure that she kept people in line. Hmm. You know, something's going on bad at the house or whatever. She would kick that. She did something wrong to her husband or something. She would kick that. Okay. You know, it was just all things work together for the good. Yeah. So it kind of um, it says that the wrong text is the partial verse to mean that uh, they'll prosper um, if they love God. And so basically that's how it's been used. But it says the full verse says, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, Money. to them who are called according to his purpose. Absolutely. That goes right down with the scripture you started out with. Yeah. Those those were like her favorite little yeah. money jump offs. Yeah. So it, yes. it's about to be money. All things finna work together for the good, y'all. We finna get this money. Oh, and we the memory of the justice and... blessed. That was another one I was really oh, missing. <laughs> like, I'm like, what does that mean? What are you saying? And they just use that just all freely. I hated that little situation. That part of my life was terrible. Yeah, I'm sorry Golly. about that, baby. Well, now you don't have to go through that because you got me. Praise and we are we are going through this walk together. So, um, but basically, the article said also that not everything is going to work out for everyone, but for those who love and know God, and who are called um to His purpose. And so, you think we have that's a, pretty a, much a sad view because of the church of what work out means? Um. Mm, yeah, I think too. I think that too because they've never, they've not told us what workout really means. I think that we think workout means finances will, will be not, no, not finance. They don't oh. just think that everything will work out. Period. So I it's just like, feel like every time I hear things of these nature, it always goes back to money. No, when I, hear, I, when I, I hear no, us saying it. no, I think that it's um a lot of times it's if you did something wrong. So I'm um I'm a teenager in the body of Christ and I get pregnant. All things will work together for the good. Um, if I um get fired from my job, all things work together for the good. If me and my husband are are going at it or he's abusing me, hey, all things will work together for the good. And so it's nothing else that goes Nobody's, with that. But it yeah. doesn't have none of this leaves any space for true accountability. Like no, no, if it doesn't. All these stones seem to yeah, be rolling over on you. It doesn't. What are you rolling over on other people? Yeah, and that's what they don't want to teach because that no. stops the ties from coming. Yeah, they don't. They right. don't want to teach that because they're right. like, okay, well, if all this, yeah, all this stuff is happening. What the heck is going I've on in your life? I've met a few people who are super real who come and pull you by your coat, man. This stuff, you know, you need them, but not everybody do that. You know, maybe. So what's the next one? It's on you. No, nah, it was the last one. No, nah, this one, this one, this one is on you. I had a good one on here too. It was the uh, it's Matthew eighteen twenty. Yeah, the two, the uh, where two, two or three are gathered, there I am. Mhm. Yeah. So where? What is it? What's it? Matthew? This is Matthew eighteen and twenty. Right. Yeah, it says where two or more are gathered. There I am with them, Talitha. Mm-hmm. We think about it. From whenever I heard that, mm-hmm. I always thought that it meant, lit really, that whenever there are a lot of people that are in agreement with each other. So you thought that, it was a click Christian kind of thing, like yeah, you, that's the way it was. Group. That's the way it was explained to me. Oh. If these people are when we're gathered. If we are all in agreement that God will honor our prayer, that's what I've always. Oh, well, thought that's not too me. far off. It's it's about the prayer. Okay. It is about the corporate okay. prayer, but it wasn't about the the click Christian. Okay. You know where you your your small group. I'm small group A, and we only uh, associate with small group A members. Mm-hmm. You know, type. I sit I sit with small group A. B sits over there. Y'all don't come over here and mess with us till after church, and then after that, don't mess with us either because we sitting by ourselves a small group A at first, too. Hmm. That's what you seem to have thought that meant. Not real. I just, I, I just always thought that it was explained that 
say me and you are going through something, mm. if we are gathered together, you and I, and we pray together and we agree upon, hey, let's pray for the strength of our marriage or, hey, let's right. pray for um, a home, a new home or something like that, that God will honor it because you and I are in agreement and we're praying together the same prayer. So that's you like what to I like always buy, Do you like to buy, I think about the way you just described that, uh-huh. going to buy like some cookies from the store uh-huh. and omitting the recipe part at the back of the box and just kind of doing whatever the hell I feel like doing. Like okay. you can't, this, you can't just this say scripture... That. Because that's part of the scripture. It started out. It started out him telling, his, him telling the disciples to think more like children. Okay. To be like more childlike in your thinking. So mm-hmm. like to not think so hard and be so serious and to be so, you know. Mm-hmm. Well, if this is a, if this is, a, just go. Let God. It's okay. pretty much what he started this thing saying. And that seems to be the. And then it goes into the, you know, and then with that, you know, you pray together, and when y'all do that together. I'm there with you, so calm your behind down. That seems like, and that seems like that's the um, the storyline be in all of these misused verses. They're all kind of going back to the same, you know, right. doggone thing to me. Um, this last one for me, I think this is the last one. Do we have any more, or do we this have is one a, more? This is a good one. Um, so this last, okay, I have one, and then Bobby has the last one, but we need to hurry up. We're about five minutes out, and so mine says. Uh, 1 Corinthians 10, 13, God will never give you more than you can handle. Right. Bobby, take that. Man, that's so, uh, Willie, Willie, because this goes back to the scriptures before about rolling over the stone on yourself. Yeah, he yeah. won't give you more than you handle, but mm-hmm. all that mess that you thought you were, you know, able to do in his name will give more on you. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? Oh. And the script, the scripture is actually saying just, just. Reschedule. Just, uh, yeah, just do that. And so the the this yeah, yeah, just just click out of it, I guess. Up there. For sure. And so the scripture is basically um what it's saying is that uh the correct text is that there hath no temptation taken you but such as is common to man, but God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. So this is the King James Version again. So basically just saying that. And that's that, something, you, the huh? beginning of that you said subject to man? That that there hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. Uh, common yes. to man. Uh-huh. Or in other words, things that you brought on yourself, yeah. things that man do. Yeah. That's not a God thing. Right, and so, so it's just saying that, you know, that he won't put more on you. That It's not that he won't put more on you than you can bear. It's just every he'll, he'll make a way for you to be able to do what it is that you need to do. And if you're a believer, pretty much. That's right. kind of what that is. So yeah, we're almost done. So the last one is on you. Yeah, uh, I don't know what the heck happened with your stuff. It was just that's I pray them straight out. Yeah, no, you. I think you left some pages at the house. Um, so the last one is Philippians four thirteen. I can do all things. I can do all things through, through Christ. Yeah. Hmm. Sleeping. That's. It's just that I can do all things through Christ, and I just. Um, I've always never heard. I've not heard. I can do all things through Christ. Now maybe uh, other people say that who don't know the word, but I've always heard. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Right. That's what I've always heard it all the way through. Right. Um, and so for me, I just thought that uh, the same thing. Be still, know that I am God. There's a lot of things that um, I can't do in my own strength. And so if I'm still, and I know that God is God, and I know that God has me, then. Um, He's going to allow me to do certain things. Right. And that's just just that simple. That's that what I believe. That sums it up. It's good. Is that it? That's pretty good. And so, um, you guys, I wanted to put this one more on here that wasn't on there. And, and I, I can't believe, like, so many church people and even um, so-called believers get this totally screwed up. And it's about money. So what do you think the one I'm talking about is about money? Yeah, man. What is it? Uh, what do well, you think? Let me say what all rap. Can I say what all rappers say? Okay. Money is the root of all evil. Absolutely. Which is the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Right. Money is not the root of all evil. That verse says, for the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through 
with many sorrows. So that is the correct scripture, 1 Timothy 6, right. 10. So it's the love of money is the root of all evil, not money. And that's even Money is one, not the root right. of all evil. In like one minute, the love of anything over God is considered evil. So it don't matter what it is. You can, you know, you can love anything more than, and you got to have a balance. Yeah. Money's beautiful. Getting money's beautiful. You're not going to go slap nobody in the face for giving you a compliment of how good you look at Walmart. Mm -hmm. You take that compliment. You take that payment. Mm -hmm. So you deserve to get payment for good things that you do. Mm -hmm. So money is not evil. Right. You know, we'll have billions of dollars. Everybody we know will touch paper. That's what it is. But we'll never love it more than we do God. We'll appreciate no. it. We'll give it back to the people. We'll continue to yeah. do our good work. Right. So. We'll, we'll serve with it and everything. And so I don't know. I, I have no clue because I saw a, a, a Facebook friend of mine um, that posted that the other day. And That's it's how not, people stay broke. That's how yeah. they stay in that illness of being Mo broke. Money is evil. And money, that. Yeah, money right. is not evil. It right. is the love of money, you guys. So we have had a good time going through these misquoted <laughs> scriptures, you guys. So hopefully you guys um, are able to um, comment and say some of the things that you thought or some of the, uh, the scriptures you that you, yeah, you thought were what they were and they were not, you guys. So we thank you guys so much for tuning in. Remember to catch us live every Friday, 1 o'clock in the p.m. Pacific Standard Time here on Hot 702.5 FM Radio. Catch us live on the Mixler, downloaded from Google Play or Apple Store. That's M-I-X-L-R. And watch us live on FB on Hot 702.5 or Food for the Soul Media Group. And catch our Rewind show, you guys, on Anchor or Spotify at Food for the Soul Media Group. And make sure you subscribe to all of our media outlets. Um, be sure to tune in next week for our movie of the month at 6 o'clock p.m. Yeah. When Big Bobby B and I will be discussing the movie the Imitation Game, and imitation that should be game. really good, be on, good. Um, on our Food for the Soul page. Our show has been sponsored in part by Mook the Barber and Chris Products, Isla Cole the Stylist, and Orle Worldwide. Hopefully we'll have a commercial uh, for him next week. So if you guys would like to be a sponsor again, hit us up at www.foodforthesoulmediagroup.press or email us at foodforthesoulpresents at gmail.com. It is your girl, Talitha Kume. And, and your boy, Big Bobby B, stay beautiful. Giving you something to talk about. Yeah. And we're out. Peace. See you guys later. Premium Grooming Essential. This, this products provides you with excellent yes. hair and skin products, along with high quality Bobby. grooming products for the hair yes. of the future. Their multi-use professional product for barbers and cosmetologists will Chris, make your Chris. desired hairlines, Chris. goatees, and Chris. eyebrows Pleasingly crisp, 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 crisp keeping your desired lines and shapes crisp by Mook the Barber. Mook the barber. Go to www.crispproducts.com. C R I S P R O D crisp. C Mook T S Barber today crisp. Mook the Barber crisp. Mook the Barber.